Thank you. Uh, thank you for this wonderful, colorful, and out of the box thinking and really giving so many ideas. Just three observations. One on, on your point. Yes, in some cases we've revisited. For instance, a famous example is the study that was mentioned on Mauritius, where we started in 1990 doing scenarios to 2010. And uh, I recently looked at the data, and it actually turned out that the development in Mauritius, which really is the development success story in Africa, was better than our most positive uh, scenarios that we thought of. Um, and also, it's really an incentive. Many of you wished me a long life, and most of my published projections go to 2050, or so maybe at the age of 94. It's really an incentive to live it up to 94 to be able to look at how long <laughs> it's where. <laughs> maybe then I will give you a lecture and then criticizing all the old projections I've done. Um, another point um, that uh, you made is sort of many of these studies that you showed are not really multi-state in the sense that you have differential fertility and mortality, but it's sort of overlaying a prevalence matrix, sort of a Sullivan method type. And this is, is very useful because some of the things, and that's where the power of demography also comes in in modeling, like we did it for the European identity, we did not model different fertility for those who have a European or a national identity, but simply the pattern that is different by age groups and with the assumption that this is persistent along cohort lines allows us to model the change in composition of the population. And uh, this really does not in all cases require this, this strong multi state assumption. That's why more generally we talk about multi dimensional demography. Uh, even just using these prevalence matrices. Also with labor force participation, it's, it's very tricky to work out labor force participation and fertility because often women drop out of the labor force because they are pregnant and so on. The last point on your uh, third sex, this is really, I think, the only time in my demographic career I felt really threatened because I was a demographer. It was the European Population Conference in Milano. I was chairing a session uh, on some population projections and all of a sudden, some 20, 30 people I've never seen before entered the room. And uh, before the, the paper was finished, the person, someone said, raised the hand and says, why do you only uh, force us to be either male, male or female? <laughs> and, and then he just stood up and he started shouting, said, you demographers are to blame for all our problems we have in our life. You force us to be something different than we are. And that was really, you know, what the hell, what have I done? But it's really, I mean, I, since then I have this, a fear inside that indeed yeah, that we are violating human rights by having these dichotomous categories. So maybe we should be seriously thinking about uh, broadening up things. Sergey and War told us that age is not what it used to be. Maybe sex is not what it used to be. <laughs> so religion is hot, but sex yeah. is even hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. So I would like to add to your list of things to think about. In addition to projecting individuals, which is what all of your examples focus on, projection of households, I think, is underdeveloped and is very important for uh, planning. Projection of settlements, places of settlement, is an area that's underdeveloped. I'm not talking only about city sizes, but where are settlements and how do they grow? Settlements are aggregates of individuals and households. Projection of family structures and relationships, that's a separate question from households because a family may be in multiple households and a household may have multiple families. And the fourth, a topic that Brian O'Neill and Mai Wen Jiang have worked on, projection of energy use by individuals, households, and settlements. And there's three separate questions there because a settlement can be arranged for more or less energy efficiency depending on the spatial arrangement. So I think there are lots of areas that we have not even begun, or we have begun but only begun, to work on. Thank you for such a uh, provocative and interesting uh, presentation. I was going to make a suggestion uh, that we project things about uh, internet use or Twitter. Uh, 
what fraction of the uh, population of countries or of the world have smartphones? Would it influence your fertility or? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, the time you spend on that. <laughs> It seems like Twitter is affecting the uh, uh, mental capacity of some politicians. <laughs> it may, may affect other things as well. Thank you, Aaron, for a lovely uh, stimulating paper. Uh, can I just add to your list of complications? Um, it's a question of multi ticking, which comes. Uh, partially comes up in, in, in the uh, identification of sex. It's important in languages, because people may want to tick more than one box, and it's important in ethnicity. And uh, usually it's fudged. You have a mixed group, that's what I've done in, in ethnic projections in the UK. Um, in New Zealand, they've actually projected ethnic populations independently, so if you add them up, it's larger than the population of New Zealand because anyone who's ticked a, ticked a box with one of the categories gets put into that population for the projection. So it's a kind of, we, it's, we need a bit of theoretical hard thinking on that. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you have done um, projections by birthplace groups in multicultural societies like Australia, Canada, US, or other countries. But one area that is uh, really neglected is the forced migration or forced migrants who are considered as refugees or IDPs or stateless, etc. Uh, UNHCR uh, has some data, but I haven't seen, uh, I mean, it's a difficult uh, area to work um, on, but uh, probably given the uh, tension and discussions on refugee and rising refugees and forced migrants, it would be probably a good idea to uh, look at uh, those who are not only migrants, but forced migrants and, and those categories that are listed by the university. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one more question, we have time. One remark. Uh, several of the basic errata uh, Joel mentioned uh, we have been doing in Austria yeah, we have been doing in Austria all the time since the 1980s uh, that is uh, household projections uh, projections of uh, families according to the family nucleus concept of the United Nations then in the first shift for Gerhard Bruckmann I mentioned uh, Darfat and I made a <coughs> uh, projection of family networks based on prevalences from two consecutive microcensor sample surveys. And uh, country of birth in a dichotomous uh, partition, Austria abroad. Uh, is being done in the Austrian national population projections uh, since, uh, I think, 2012 annually. So thank you. That's uh, uh, an example where Austria, as a small country, is not so perceived globally. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Amber. And I think we can...